Hi FlossTube, I'm Pam. Welcome to my channel. Um, this is floss tube number 11. It has been probably 3,000 years since I was with you last. Um, that's not true. It's been about four weeks though, I think, or maybe even five. I don't know how many weeks were in August. Um, but the last time I filmed was August 1st and today is September 2nd. So it's been a month. I apologize. Um, if you are new, welcome. Thanks for stopping by and, and checking my channel out. Um, and if you are returning, thank you very much for coming back. Um, and thank you to all my commenters. It really makes my day. I don't always get a chance, especially in uh, my, wow. In August, I was super bad about commenting back on your comments. August was kind of a crazy month, but I just wanna say I do appreciate each and every comment. I read them all um, and I try to comment on them back. Um, just maybe not in August. August is usually a very slow month um, in the Dumont household and this past August was a little bit of crazy and I kind of lost my stitchy bug a little bit and I didn't have as much stitching to show you guys so I just I didn't film. Um, so I think moving forward I'm going to have a plan to film once a month and then if there's more in a month then we'll just consider those a bonus right? Okay. So what is my channel about? It is about cross stitch. We're gonna talk about everything I've stitched in the past month, um, everything I plan on stitching, any sort of stitchy stash that I've bought, um, which is not a lot this month. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I've got to say, except let's talk about my stitching. Um, last video, we, oh, I did wanna comment on this a little bit. Um, last video, Sorry, huge truck driving past my house. I live on a main road, it makes me crazy. Okay, so last month I had asked you guys, I had shown my Mirabilia and I had asked you if you thought I should continue stitching it. Um, and basically the general consensus was, Pam, you're nuts if you don't continue stitching it. So I will. Um, and I'll, I have, I have not put it in the rotation yet, but I will stitch it. It is going to get finished. Um, I did one, I'll ask this, I'll, I have a question I need to ask about it, but I'll ask it when I show you one of my new starts. Okay, so I did do a couple of new starts in the past month. I got a few finishes, I can't wait to show those. And I did do a little bit of stitching on other things. All right, go, let's start. Wow, my, I have not caffeinated yet this morning and my brain synapses are firing super slow. They're a little bit sluggish. Okay, finish number one or two. It could be one and two. Um, this is, I'm super excited about this because now I can get onto the FFOing stage which needs to happen before Christmas. Um, so these are the ornaments that I was stitching from the Ultimate Cross Stitch Christmas Magazine. Um, that came out, what it's, where is it? It's volume 23, 2019. I was stitching these guys. They're super cute. So I stitched all four. Um, they're by Emma Congan, who I think is Stitchrovia. You can correct me or inform me if I'm wrong. Um, so I did all four. And I was originally going to FFO them as a snow globe. Um, if you've seen Vonna Pfeiffer's tutorial, <clears throat> Sorry, tutorial on, um, she has a tutorial for, I'll try to link it below. Um, she has a tutorial for, for finishing your things in a little like snow globe ornament with like little fake snow in there. And it, they're super cute, but I actually think these are gonna be too big. So they might just be like a circle flat finish sort of thing. All right, so when you saw it last, I was working on the snowman. So I got the snowman finished. This might be my favorite one. I love this, I love that. And then I started the next one and got it done, yay! So yeah, I love that too. So they're super cute. I'll show all four because this might be the last time you see them until I FFO them. So this was the first one I did. This one's probably my least favorite. And I think it's because you can't see the, the people are not as obvious. And, I, and it's the little people I love in these. Mm, I love the sledders. So then I had the sledder people and the snowman. 
in the Christmas tree. So this was stitched on 32 count light blue Lugana. So I think it's just a Swigart. Is it Swigart? No, yes, it is. I'm never, I can never remember, is Swigart Lugana and which all is Joblin or are they both Swigart? I don't know, but it's an even weave and it's more importantly, it's done. So I do not have to stitch any more ornaments for the rest of the year if I don't want to. I just have to finish them now, which if you've been following me from the beginning, you know, is not easy for me. I am not crafty. So we'll see how it goes. But I think, I mean, they're like this big. I think for them to go into a snow globe, the snow globe would have to be, I just, I think they're too big to be something you hang on your Christmas tree. They could be a Christmas decoration, um, but I don't think they're gonna be a tree ornament. So I think they'd be better flat. Any, okay, I have to remember, cause I definitely wanna try this ornament snow globe, but I think next year I'll have to remember to do smaller, not something this big, but like something that big. Okay, finish number two was something that I had asked you guys about in the last video. Um, it is, Octopus's Garden by Blackbird Designs. Um, and I got it done, I'm super excited. So now I have this one done and I have Yellow Submarine by Blackbird Designs done. And I wanna frame them the same and hang them next to each other. They're both on the same fabric, which is a 32 count linen. And it is by Seraphim Fabrics and I do not know the color. Um, so it's done. Look at how cute. Super cute. I, this is probably one of my, my proudest finishes. Um, last time I had asked you if this jellyfish needed to be moved because he's supposed to be up a little more over here. He's too close to this fish. And most of you said, eh, leave it the way it is. No one's ever going to know. Um, I did have a few of you say, eh, he's kind of a little funny looking. You might want to move him. And then when I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't move him because I'm too lazy. Let's be honest. That's what it boiled down to. It, it, I live in the land of good enough and it was good enough. So what I do want to point out though, is these are my first, I don't even know. I'm not going to get them close enough. Are they going to focus, focus, focus. I don't think they're gonna focus really sharp. They were my first eyelets. So some of them, for example, that one is a little wonky and some of them like that one are amazing. So my first little eyelets, I was so proud. I showed them off to everybody in my house and mostly everybody in my house was like, okay. But I was super proud. So I have now done the eyelet stitch and I can say that I don't have to be scared of it anymore. Um, so those were my two finishes. Whenever that octopus's garden and my yellow submarine get into a frame, who knows? I have a list of things that need to get finished before those. Okay, then I had two, sorry, my hair is, I'm probably gonna be fiddling it the whole time. It's still a little wet, I'm fresh from the shower. And I'm trying not to, use my blow dryer and like a bunch of crazy products on my hair and I, and I'm growing it out. So it's drying air by the air naturally. And so it's a little bit flippy. It's a little bit crazy and it's a little bit hanging in my hat, in my eyes. And I, if I keep touching it, we're just going to have to live with that. Okay. Start number one. I am a huge fan of, um, stitching book club. I'm trying to think who does Stitching Book Club. Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. You can find her on Etsy. I don't know her first name, but I know it's Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. And this, the book we're reading now, which just, just started, so it is not too late to get on this. Um, we're doing Frankenstein. So she released The Border first, with Frankenstein in the middle before we started officially, before we officially started the sal. Um, and then part one came out on Saturday, this past Saturday, August 29th. 
Um, and it was this house and the ship. So this is part one. Now, this was, um, you could pick any fabric you wanted and any, any floss. So what I chose, and I think I showed this last time. I didn't have my fabric last time, but I had my floss. I chose Raven by Gentle Arts. I've already used a skein of it. Um, she says you need four skeins. I only bought three. So we'll see how this goes, but I, I'm going to ask you for your opinion in a sec. So I might not need four skeins. Um, Raven is this gorgeous black and green, variegated black and green. And one of the skeins that I bought was very black and less green. And the other two were very green and less black. So I ended up, what I ended up doing, because I, I didn't want there to be section. I, I wanted, because the, the skeins were different from each other, I wanted it to be a little more uniform. So what I did is I stitched with the black, the more black than green, all of the outside border like this outside border and Frankenstein in the middle. And then I switched to the more green than black for the inside border. Cause I wasn't sure that I had enough of the more black than green. Wow, this is gonna get confusing real fast. Um, to do the whole inside border. Um, Cause I, I just didn't have a lot left. Anyway, I am doing this on 16 count fog by Picture this plus. I thought that fog would be a good choice for Frankenstein. I mean, the color is a good choice, but I liked the name for it as well. Um, and yeah, so I've also got most of part one done. I'm really excited about this. So I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring the picture in close. On the house, there's a lightning bolt and then there's rain coming down. And then on the ship, there's some little stars. So what I'm thinking, and I don't know, maybe this is dumb, is the lightning bolt and the rain that should be in here. I'm thinking of doing in a, I'm thinking of doing it in, um, in a toile. So maybe the one that's like white or maybe the gray to give it a little bit of sparkle and to use less of the raven because I'm a little nervous that I'm not gonna have enough. And then what happens if the next skein I get is not more green than black, but more black than green? It might be weird. So I'm, I'm a little nervous. And then I could do the same thing with the stars. And then I don't, obviously it's a mystery, so I don't know what the other two sections are gonna look like. But if they have things that could be a little bit sparkly, I could do the same thing. So there would be a little bit of sparkle. Um, the only thing, so A, I'm not sure if that would look dumb. And then B, I'm not sure if the white etoile would not show up on here because it's such a light fabric. Um, or if just the sparkle would show up, which also would be pretty. I also have like that Krynic gold um, blending filament, which I could use too. That might be nice, but not for the rain. Let me know what you think. It's charted to just be done. Like it's supposed to be a monochromatic piece. Um, if you go on Instagram, a lot of people have it done already. And most of the ones that I've seen done, nobody ha has done anything different. Um, but I have seen somebody who did do the lightning bolt in a different color. So maybe I could do the lightning bolt in that yellow at all. I just, I think I just want to add a little bit of sparkle. I think is what this is coming down to. Um, so let me know what you think. So that was start number one, which is well past start and into the whip. Um, and then I was just feeling like another start. You guys know that I only allow myself to have 12 whips at any given time. And I had some extra space and I was feeling like I wanted to get this started. Um, I have this in my, uh, who designed this? The 805 Stitcher. This was the booby bag that you could get from um, Stephanie Webb, Lindy Stitches. She did that with her booby chart. It's, that's not what it's called, but they're blue footed boobies. And I took the chart and stuff out of it because I don't plan on stitching that probably till next year, but I wanted to use the project bag. 
So that's okay. You don't have to keep the matching chart in with your matching project bag, right? Because I enjoy looking at the boo <laughs> I enjoy looking at the the boobies and they make me happy. So I don't want to wait to play with it. Okay. So anyway, I my my new start was letters from Nora, um, the letter H, and I'm stitching this for my niece Harper who is turning two next month. And I am not gonna have this ready for her birthday, but I'm thinking I could have it ready for her third birthday if I stitch on it every single month on her birthday day. So, all right, terrible auntie. I have no idea what her birthday day is, um, but let's say it's the 19th. It might not be. Um, every 19th, I would stitch on this throughout the year and I would probably have it done well before October of 2021. So this is stitched on, this is a seraphim fabric. It's a 32 count. I want to say it is petals in the wind. And I got quite a bit done. This was two days of stitching. Do I, am I showing, I'm showing you the back. Um, this was two days of stitching. So I got, where do, what do I have done? I started on a little bit of the H and a little bit of the like viney thing that goes through it. She's got a leg, legs are important in her little dress and I've started some of her wing. So yeah, that, I thought that was, that was a fair amount for two days. I really haven't wanted to touch a sense, but there you go. So my question is, I don't have a beading needle. So whatever needle I was using for my the my mirabilia for the beading i don't like it and i don't know if i don't like it because it's not a good like i don't know so if you do beading i would love it if you could tell me what your favorite beading needle is because i think in order to enjoy the beading i probably need to have a needle that's useful my needle that I was using was like really long and I don't know. I just, it felt cumbersome. So I could use some advice. Beading needles. I'm nowhere near ready to bead this yet, but if I want to put my um, July, August amethyst, sorry, my July amethyst fairy, um, my mirror, my other mirabilia, um, into rotation, I'm going to need a beading needle. So, wow, I can't get this back in the in the back. Okay. Wow, I'm super out of practice. This is what happens. You you make weekly videos and then you take a month off, and I don't really know what I'm doing. All right, so that was it for new starts, and then I had things that I'm just been working on. Um, this was mostly done. There's not going to be a lot of change on this, I think, from the last time you saw it. This is the Berry Bowl sampler that I am doing with my mom. She's doing the heartstring samplery. Sorry, all sorts of crinkles. She's doing the heartstring samplery side, and I am doing the Scarlet House side, but she's doing the heartstring samplery side on Wren, and I'm doing the Scarlet House side on Heartland because she had never stitched on a fun color before. So I let her have pick. Okay, so I was stitching my third basket. This is 14 count by the way, which is not usually my first preference, but um, my mom's eyes are not as good as mine. And this was her first project since like, I don't know, 1999. So we picked 14 count. It's 14 count Ada, picture this plus Heartland. And so I finished this bowl. I was waiting to get more picnic basket in. Um, it's kind of like, it's not my best stitching. It's kind of eh, eh. But you know what, it's good enough. And when it's filled in with a whole bunch of other variables, I don't think I'm gonna care. I think my problem is that I don't like the, the black, like I, that's gotta be, I forgot the color, but it's, 
so like that dark brown almost black with the light i don't think i like that and it's very the stitching is very spacey and i can see a lot of the fabric through and it's not my favorite but good enough i'm not redoing it so there it is and i still as i'm holding this up i these berries still i still have to do something with those but i'm probably going to save that for last they will not look like weird floating berries when this is done oh my god my hair is making me crazy all right so that so this was mostly done the last time you saw it. I just had to fill in with the picnic bath, the lighter brown in here. So that's done now. And I have not picked it up to start the my fourth bowl because, and I probably won't um, for a little bit. This is probably getting put by for a little bit, even though it's sampler September and it would make sense to stitch my berry bowl sampler in September. I am not going to be, and we'll get into that in a sec when we get to plans. Um, oh, and then I have been promising to show this for a few videos now. Sorry, this is way crinkly. This is my Granny Square Daily Temperature Stitch Along by Carolyn Manning. Um, and the premise is that you stitch a little granny square every day, depending on the high temperature of the day in your area. So here we are. This is January through August. I have not started stitching September yet. So I think last time you saw it, you didn't even get to see all of July done. So let me find July. So at the beginning of every, the first day of every month, I outline it with a yellow etoile um, so I can see them really easily. Oh my, I wish I had a hair clip on me. I don't. Um, so I can, obviously they stand out the beginnings of the month. So this was the beginning of July. This was the beginning of August. So we've had probably since the beginning of May, a really long stretch of warm days, at least 70s and above. I think the last day that it was lower than 70 was the first day, the first day of June. Where is the first day of June? It was lower than 70 degrees and everything since has been 70 and above, which makes sense for June, July, and August. Um, we had three heat waves, which is defined, I don't know if this is the same definition everywhere, I assume it is, which is 90 degrees or higher for three days in a row. So we had three heat waves this summer, which are in here somewhere. Um, I am so tired of stitching orange and red, so I can't wait for the weather to start cooling down. I'm kind of excited to see what day will be the first day below 70. I assume that will happen sometime in September. So yeah, we're over halfway done. I still have plenty of fabric left, but over halfway done. Really excited about this. I'm already starting to think what I wanna do for next year. I don't know if you guys wanna join me on a temperature stitch along. Um, and it doesn't have to be this one. I'm not gonna do this one next year. It could be whatever daily temperature stitch along you wanna do. Um, I'm gonna, po I'll post a link to an Etsy shop that has a few different ones that I like um, below. But I'm thinking maybe we all pick a daily chart that we like and we stitch it all next year. Um, I'm thinking, I'm leaning towards one. I can't remember the name of this Etsy shop, but she has a chart that it's a tree and you stitch a, and then there's 12 branches for the 12 months. And then you stitch a leaf for every day, depending on the temperature as the color of the leaf. I'm thinking I'm leaning real heavily towards doing that one next year. So if you guys want to join me on a temperature stitch along, let me know. I mean, I'm doing one either way. So it's just whether we want to make a hashtag for it or not. I am, if I knew how to pause and restart a video, I would be pausing and restarting this because I really need to clip my bangs back. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, last thing that we're 25 minutes. Wow, I, this is gonna be a fast one. Um, because again, not a lot of stitching happened. Or maybe maybe it did and I feel like it wasn't a lot, but 
for me, it felt like I did not do a lot of stitching. I got out um, a year at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. And I started stitching the last time, and it's been a few months, so it's been since July. The last time we talked about it, I said that I was going to stitch the box for July and I didn't get it done and that's okay. I am moving on to September. We're skipping right over August. I'm moving on to September. My plan is to stitch on this the whole rest of this week and um, I, I will get into plans, I promise. But I, I have a plan for September and a plan going forward to make my brain happier. So I did not get a ton done. Like I literally got last night a corner done before it was time for dinner. Um, and then last night we watched Bones, so I didn't get any stitching done, but I got a corner done. That's something, right? I am stitching this on 40 count Picture This Plus Legacy. This is what I have so far. I have January done, I have February done, I have March like three quarters done, um, I have June like half done, um, I've got a little bit of block for July, and then we're starting on September. And I'm okay with that. At the beginning, this was my new year new start for 2020 and in my head, and back when I started this, I was a like 90% monogamous stitcher. And in my head, I, my plan was that I would stitch a block every month. And that just has not panned out because there are way too many things I want to be stitching now. And those blocks take me at least three weeks to do. Um, because I am not a fast 40 count stitcher. It's really what it boils down to. Okay, I got two... I mean, I guess, hold on, I'm gonna sneeze. I'm gonna sneeze. Nope, I'm not. Um, so, the fabric for Frankenstein is new stash acquisition as well. But I couldn't wait to show you guys. I needed to use it because it's a stitch along and you have to keep up. I get so frustrated when I don't keep up. Um, so other than that, I only got two other things. I purchased um, a friend of mine, a stitchy friend of mine was doing a D stash. So I grabbed, she had a project kitted up, which I was super excited about. Um, and I think this is going to be my winter solstice start. So this is, I'm gonna take, this is too shiny. We're gonna take this out of the package. So this is Oh Christmas Tree by, who is this by? Is this All Through the Night? I think so. Do, do, do. Folk art designs with a bit of whimsy. Bonnie Sullivan is the designer. So All Through the Night, Oh Christmas Tree. I love this, like I love this. So pretty. So she had the chart and the fabric, which is a 30 count. I've never stitched on 30 count before. So this will be exciting for me, something new. So it is um, Putty by Weeks Dye Works. It's a 30 count. I'm not usually a fan of Weeks Dye Works fabric and it's definitely the old fabric um, not the Zweigart base. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It's I love the color. So I can't figure out how to fold it back up. And then she had the floss, which is, let me get it out of the package, all the crinkles. It's a Valdani olive green. So, oh, that's lovely. Lovely. That's lovely. So four skeins, I think that'll be enough. Oh my gosh, so excited. So I am starting that on the solstice. And then once I start that, I don't have a Mary 25 um, project right now since my ornaments are done. Um, and that's okay. Um, 
I just won't do any Mary 25. Mary 25 stitching, by the way, is a hashtag um, on Instagram. I think on I only use hashtags on Instagram. Um, that you stitch on a holiday or winter project on the 25th of every month. So starting, I'll start this on the solstice, um, which I think is December 21st, but it could be the 20th. Um, and then it'll get stitched on the 25th of every month. And then my last bit of new, and you guys have all seen this by now, I'm not gonna take out the whole box and show it all off. About a thousand people have done this on their floss tubes by now. I'm late to the game, but I did order Coming to America. I'm super excited about this. My, for several reasons. First, I'm a turkey baby. I was born on Thanksgiving and my plan is to do every year um, for my birthday, a new start on my birthday is to do something that has a turkey on it or um, reminds you of Thanksgiving or thankfulness or gratitude is my plan. And this year I had been planning, there had been another Mayflower chart, which I don't have on me, that had come out at market. Um, wow, I didn't know I was gonna say this or I would have been more prepared and had the chart next to me that I was going to do for my birthday start. Um, but then, then this happened and I, so I'm not gonna do this and another Mayflower one on my birthday. Um, I feel like I had a point to this. I don't remember what it is. Oh, anyway, I was, cause that was part one. So I'm super excited about this because I'm a turkey baby. And so I have a special place in my heart for um, Thanksgiving and Plymouth Colony. Um, and by turkey baby, I mean, I was born on, on Thanksgiving. Um, basically at lunchtime too, my, my poor mom. Um, and secondly, I'm really, my, so my second hobby besides cross stitch is uh, genealogy. I really, really love, mostly because I, like Nancy Drew was my favorite books growing up and genealogy is sort of like being a sleuth, like a detective. And every time you find that next little bit of information that leads you to the next person, it's like, I don't know, the warm fuzzies happen and the light bulbs and anyway, I love genealogy. So I have not found a Mayflower ancestor yet. I'm close, I'm not close. I feel like I could be close though. Um, I have gotten back to the Revolutionary War, so I have a Patriot ancestor, um, but I don't, I haven't gotten to the Mayflower yet. But I feel like I could, within the next year, I could be there. Anyway. The whole premise of this, the chart is adorable. It's the women of the Mayflower. And then you've got um, obviously the Mayflower and you've got Cape Cod, which is where they landed first. And then you've got Plymouth, which is where they ended up. Um, and then it says, we are living in the tomorrow for which they wrought 2020 and 1620 up here because it's the 400th anniversary of the landing of the Mayflower. Um, and I know that the colonization of America is problematic for many reasons to many people. Um, but I still can't help feeling a bit of pride. Um, I understand the, the human want to be somewhere. Anyway, we're not, we're gonna, if I could edit, I would take that out. We're, I'm not gonna have that discussion. Um, but, I, so anyway, I do love the Mayflower. I'm really excited about the anniversary and um, yeah. Anyway, I have two questions about, about it though. So the kit came with, I ordered all the floss that comes with it, um, of which I have two questions about it. And then I ordered the, um, I think it's Country Mocha. Vintage Country Mocha was the fabric, the called for fabric. But then my LNS, uh, the World in Stitches in Littleton, Massachusetts, had the opportunity to get some hand dyed fabric from Seraphim Fabrics specifically for this. And so I ordered that as well so that I would have a choice. And now I don't know what to choose. <laughs> 
So I'm trying to take out all the fabric. So this is the called, all the floss. This is the called for fabric. And like, obviously the floss all looks amazing on it. And I should probably just do the called for, but this is the fabric. Oops, lost the floss. This is the fabric that from Seraphim Fabrics. And the floss also looks really good on it. Um, so I'm not sure, what do I do? Which do I pick? I don't know why I thought a decision would be a good idea. Um, the floss that I'm concerned about on the blue are these two. I think this will show up fine. This will probably show up fine too. Here's the other question I have for you. When you look at this chart, the waves, the water are, they're really, it's really blue, right? I thought that that was this, but it's not, it's this mountain mist, gentle arts, gentle arts, mountain mist. That's not, that's not blue at all. Now living near the Atlantic ocean, the Atlantic ocean is actually more like this color than this color. So, I mean, maybe this makes more sense, but it's not, it's not gonna look like this. I need to take this out of the package. Do I start stitching and see how it goes or do I just swap it out right at the beginning? Ah, I can't get it out of its package. Come on now. I don't know if anybody else has noticed this or thinks that it's a problem. Like that is definitely blue. That is not, and even down here, all of that blue, that's not mountain mist. Where is the color key? So I don't know if I'm allowed to show this or not, but I think it's fine. It's just the key. This is the symbol for that water. It's mountain mist. I just, it, that, uh, it doesn't make sense. Would you, and unfortunately I got the floss pack. So there's like four mountain mists in there because you need it a lot everywhere that I really think should be that blue, which is Chesapeake Bay by Classic Color Works. So I don't, do you guys think that I should just see how it goes? Maybe it looks more blue on the fabric. And if that's the case, then I should probably use the called for fabric. Maybe it shows up more blue on the called for than it would on a blue. Like on a blue fabric, it shows up green because it's on a real blue where on the brown, I'm wondering if it shows up more blue. Hmm. You know what? It might. It still doesn't show up as blue as Chesapeake, but oh, this might, this might actually be making the decision for me because I actually think that's what's, let me know. I, so, but you have to, you have to let me know by September 6th because I'm starting this on September 6th. The whole premise is that we start this on the 6th of September and have it finished by November 11th because that is the 66 days that the Mayflower had its voyage. So, which I'm gonna, full disclosure, mine is not gonna be done by November 11th. I'm usually good about keeping up with these things, but I am doing it on 40 count, which means I'm gonna be slower. I do have the Frankenstein cell going at the same time and I wanna keep up with that and that has priority for me um, because there will be another one coming out after Frankenstein and I don't wanna be behind on Frankenstein before the next one comes out. Um, but I do have a goal to have it finished by Thanksgiving. So instead of having a birthday start, I'll have a birthday finish. Um, so let me know if you see this before September 6th, which you think I should do. I should never have given myself a choice. Ah, okay. Um, I had one more thing I wanted to show you. Somebody mentioned in my last video 
Um, they wanted me to show the finish that I had hanging on my wall. So here it is. Um, I apologize for the glare. It, I, I'm gonna super glare you now. If you can see in the glare in front of me is a wall of windows. There is no way I can avoid the glare. Um, but maybe if I tilt it a little bit. So this is the second thing that I ever finished. Um, and the second thing I ever had framed. I'm gonna try to find my first one. I think it's down, I gave it to my daughter. I think it's down her boxes of stuff that she has not taken out of my house. So I think it's down there somewhere. So, oops, sorry, that's Charlie. He's barking, if you can hear him. He probably saw the squirrel, I apologize. He's probably gonna make my other dog Daisy bark. So I'm gonna make this really fast. Um, I finished this in 2002. Those are my initials here. And then all my sisters and my best friend's initial. Um, so I have four sisters and one best friend and they are, their initials are in here. And this was called, I don't remember who did it. It was the Quaker Friendship Sampler. Um, and it's, I thought I, maybe it's something you can still get. Maybe that's not even really the title. I've always called it the Quaker Friendship Sampler. Um, I had this framed at With Heart and Soul in Cumberland, Rhode Island, which no longer, ex it does actually exist if you Google it, but it's a gift shop now and not a, cross, not a needle workshop. Um, but I'm thinking I had to have finished it. I had to have framed it. So I finished it in 2002, but it was framed before 2000 or probably, shoot, it had to have been framed after 2004 because there's a little sticker on here for their fifth anniversary from 1999 to 2004. So I, this was finished at, a framed, sorry, framed at least 2004, probably a little bit later. Um, yeah, I love that. It is stitched on, I believe it's a 16 count. Um, definitely an Ada. My stitching is super bad. All my X's go in different directions. They're not uniform and I don't care. It makes me happy to look at it. So that hangs right there on the wall behind me normally. Um, plans. So here's my plans. We are actually getting longer than I thought we were gonna be. Um, quickly, plans. And then we're gonna do a giveaway. I plan on, uh, the Frankenstein style gets released every two weeks. So when that gets released, that gets first priority. And when it's done being stitched, I am going to take out the uh, Coming to America. So say Saturday, the new, uh, the new parts get released for Frankenstein. I stitch them, I have them finished by Tuesday. Then from Tuesday all the way till the next release for Frankenstein, I'll stitch Coming to America is my plan. So those are the only two things I'm gonna be stitching on. Um, which means I'm probably, there's not also my temperature style. Sorry. That was, that was middle kid number two. Um, well, I only have one middle kid, but son, son number one, child number two, middle kid. Um, what was I saying? Oh, wow. Sorry. Caffeine. I know we talked about this. It hasn't happened yet. Um, so I'm foreseeing that within a two week period, at least a week and a half is probably gonna get devoted to the Mayflower because it doesn't take very long to get through those little parts on Frankenstein. Um, and then, right, so I'm probably not going to do a weekly floss tube because there's not gonna be a lot to show. I'm only stitching on two projects, but there will definitely be a floss tube at the beginning of October. I might do a mid-September, floss tube just to kind of keep you up to date on how things are going. We'll see. That's my plan right now. Plans change. We'll see how it goes. All right. So as I have said before, I have been going through my charts and kind of hoping to pass along things that I've never stitched, don't plan on stitching, or I stitched and I am never going to stitch again. Um, so this one, I never stitched. It is Dragon Tails by Color Charts. I think I picked that, I may have picked this up at my needle workshop, but I think I got it at Michael's. Um, I've probably had this since the late 90s, early 2000s. I've never stitched it. It has, it's, it's traveled with me through many moves. 
Um, so it's got a little rip here. Um, it's come a little bit unstapled. So it, it has some wear and tear. This is not a new chart, even though it's never been stitched. But they're cute. Look at those little dragons. Now, if you are a new stitcher, I'm not saying you can't handle it, um, but there is half stitches in here. There are Smyrna crosses. There are lazy daisies. There are French knots. Um, oh my gosh. They're so cute though. So cute. It's not really focusing. Anyway, if you would like to stitch this adorable chart, just let me know in the comments below. First of all, don't say giveaway. I will delete your comment and I don't want to delete anybody's comments. Um, it hurts my heart to do that, but I will delete your comment if you say giveaway because YouTube is not always a kind place and people search out words and giveaway brings the trolls. So we're not, we're not, I will delete comments that say giveaway. Um, number one, number two, be 18 because you can't give me your address if you're not 18. And then I can't send you this if you win. And that again would make me really sad. Um, and number three, if you want to, to have a chance to win this, just let me know you want to stitch the dragons below. Dragons is going to be the word that I'm not actually going to search for because I don't know how to do that, but I will look for that word and write everybody's name down on a piece of paper with a number and then do the random number picker because I'm old school. Okay. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy September. It's usually one of my favorite months um, with all of the back to school stuff, which I know is kind of a weird thing right now, but as a homeschooler, for me, we're going to be getting back to school. Um, so yeah, enjoy September. I will see you in October. And if I see you before then, we're going to consider it a bonus. Bye everyone.